Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to my presentation on the Windows Registry and Forensics Investigations. Um, I hope you guys find this to be a little bit useful, included some information as far as paths to certain things, um, where things might be stored, and I'll go over a little bit of it, too, in terms of what information might be pertinent, when you might encounter that sort of thing, when you might not. So um, I'll make sure to kind of guide you guys along as we go, too. So getting into it, what is the registry? The Windows Registry is a database that stores numerous settings for the operating system, as well as many of the applications that make use of the registry. Um, certain applications that are embedded into Windows might store their settings in the registry. Um, not everything does, but a good por portion of them do make use of it in some um, uh, way or another. Uh, if you'd like, you can always view the files that are contained in the registry in their native format, at least in terms of just kind of where they're stored on the PC. They're not going to look like much because there's nothing really associated with them in terms of something that will open uh, if you click on them and allowing you to view them. But nonetheless, we can always see where they are. So if you go to C, uh, System32, uh, and then Config, you should see the following files. If you scroll down towards the bottom, you'll see SAM security, software, and system. Um, again, when you look at them, there's nothing uh, associated with them in terms of an application that's going to open. But if you look on the right side in the column, you can definitely see that you have uh, the ability to view the size of the files. You can see that a few of them definitely have some size to them. So we can obviously conclude that there is some information there, but just we can't view it in the current way. Uh, there is another one, a fifth registry database that is stored elsewhere. Um, this information is actually pertinent to the individual user profiles themselves too, and settings that that particular user, whether they're logged in or not, might have gone ahead and set up knowingly or unknowingly. Um, sometimes they're hidden, so you'll have to unhide them. Um, if you just simply type in the search bar hidden, you should get something that'll pop up that'll say show hidden files, and you can just change it that way so that hidden, you know, critical, System files that are typically hidden from Windows users will then be viewable. Uh, this is one of them. It's the intuser.dat. So if you just go to C users, whatever the name of the user profile is, and you scroll down, you should see that intuser.dat file. That is the registry file uh, that contains information that is specific to that user uh, that happens to own that profile. Uh, moving on. So of the registry keys, when we go into the Windows registry editor, we'll see H key classes uh, root. Um, this contains information on file extensions, so really how certain things open, what those file extensions do, um, what they associate with, things of that nature. Uh, to be honest, this isn't really critical to forensics investigations. You don't really dig into this at all, um, you know, unless maybe hypothetically, I'm just the only way I can think of it is somebody changed the parameters of file extensions and how things open and things of that nature. You might see it there. Key current user is the next one. That one, uh, as it says, contains settings for the user that is currently logged on. So that is essentially the into user.dat folder, but um, it's parsed out and you can actually view things that are in it. That one does have a lot of pertinence to a forensics investigation because obviously it is a bunch of settings uh, that might be associated with an individual user as opposed to, um, you know, just a, a, a generic account. Um, moving on. H key local machine is information on hardware and software that is installed. It's non-user specific, but that being said, there can be quite a bit of helpful information on there when it comes to forensics investigations. Um, we'll get into that a little bit later, and I'll show you guys kind of what I'm referring to when I, I'm talking about things that are helpful. Uh, things that can help correlate information, um, create a timeline, things of that nature too. Um, H key users. Is information that pertains to all users, including generic accounts on the PC. Um, there might be things like printer settings and a few other things and odds and ends in there too. You can see a ton of stuff. For instance, investigation, at least in my you know short experience of, of doing um, certain work in that field, that um, really is going to come from there. And then finally, HK current config is information on the configuration of hardware that happens to be attached to the PC. Uh, so moving on, how do we view this information? Kind of going back to that first step, if you look at the way the folders are stored in the PC um, and the Windows hierarchy of, of the file explorer, we can see that obviously we can't view them. Well, that's because these are databases that need to be parsed out and they're unviewable in their standard format. 
Uh, in case, which is one of the gold standards of forensics computer investigator software, has a built-in parser. Pretty handy. You would just navigate to those same SAM software security system and into user.dat folders. Uh, you could right-click on them, and that would allow you to parse it out. I would happily do that for you guys, although in this case is a few thousand dollars, so unfortunately I do not have it installed on my PC. Uh, FTK, uh, another uh, gold standard as far as forensic software programs, also pretty expensive. Unfortunately, I don't have it as well. Um, you can get a demo version of Registry Viewer online, uh, which is another way to kind of parse out information. You can take uh, some of those uh, registry files from other PCs and you can parse them out and view them that way. Um, being that it's a demo version, it's somewhat limited, so you can't really do a ton of stuff. Uh, and then finally, the one that is built in native to the PC is the Windows Registry Editor, um, which allows you to actually view the files uh, and, uh, and then you can kind of see what things are, where things are structured, that sort of way. Um, the Windows Registry Editor isn't really a forensics tool at all. It, it really is just not going to hold up to the scrutiny. Um, that is going to be required for a forensics investigation because uh, the main key of computer forensics, for those of you who are not aware, is that you have to be able to extract this information and approve through it through very mathematical algorithms and means that you have not altered the information in any capacity whatsoever. Um, basically, it has to hold up in a court of law. And if you are obviously going to potentially send people to prison over this sort of thing, then you have to make sure that you are proving this to be true beyond a reasonable doubt and that the information is authentic and unaltered. So the Windows Registry Editor, just to reiterate, it's not really a forensics tool, but on your PC it does allow you to at least view the database so you can kind of follow along and see what I'm talking about. Um, there are some options that you can always do. You have some cool stuff you can find online as far as being able to customize your PC settings and things like that, um, which involve altering things in the registry. That being said, if you break something, you can break it pretty hard if you're messing around in the registry. So kind of do it at your own risk. Uh, I always recommend if you're going to start altering stuff in there, always make a backup of whatever key you are altering. So then that way you have a way to undo your settings. But anyway, without further ado, let's get into a little bit. Uh, first, there's going to be profiles. So if you look on the left side, you can see over here that there is um, you know, kind of a series of long numbers all starting with S, S-1-5, and then various numbers from there on out, uh, followed by those pretty lengthy numbers. Those are going to be your security IDs. These are handy in a forensics investigation because this allows you to associate a user account um, with uh, a number. So you might have instances where the, the big number shows up, not the account, but when we actually look at the information stored in there, we can go ahead and see that that is in fact C, users, and Chris. When we look on the right side, under the red icon profile image path, we can see that in fact that's my name. So that uh, number is associated with my account. And if you look up towards the top, we can see the path of computer, H key, local machine, software. And these are pretty long, some of them. So some of this information is buried down in there. Uh, Microsoft Windows NT, current version, profile list. And then from there, we can see that we have all of our IDs. Um, the next one is going to be network cards. Uh, and that is going to be under local machine as well, software, Microsoft Windows NT, almost the same location, current version, network cards, and then we can see we have two and three as our identifiers in there. And then if we go ahead and look over on the right side, we can see what that is. Uh, it's an Intel dual band wireless card, so obviously the Wi-Fi card of this particular laptop. Uh, more handy information directly below that, we can see the GUID, which ideally this should be a unique number associated with this wireless card. So that'll allow you to correlate with information that might be stored uh, on networks and things of that particular nature. So, you know, things that you can kind of correlate activity and stuff of that sort with. Uh, the next one, this one's a really handy location. Um, anytime you plug in a USB device into a PC, it automatically creates uh, a profile for it. Um, so if you go to computer, uh, HQ local machine, systems, control set 001, uh, enum, and a USB store, then we can see uh, directly under USB store that there are a couple of different IDs that are all associated with that, that. And maybe some stuff that we might, uh, you know, recognize. We see, you know, Flash, obviously. We see SanDisk uh, Cruiser. Um, that's a pretty common name, uh, a pretty typical um uh, flash drive that people use. Something also that's also pretty handy is you can see under here the disk ID if you look over on the right side. So it gives you an ID number for that particular 
um, USB, which is also pretty handy. Um, you know, this would come in contact with information is stolen or removed from a PC, intellectual property theft, theft of trade craft and trade secrets, um, stuff of that particular nature. You can uh, associate it with a USB stick that might have been plugged into that PC and, you know, kind of just helps helps to correlate that information. So pretty handy one to know. Uh, mounted drives, kind of along the same other lines. This is just going to be mounted devices. Um, you know, this generally is just going to be, this will pertain to, you know, things that might be externally mounted in terms of, of storage. So we can see, when we look over on the right, we see there's a C, uh, an ID for a C drive, a D drive, and an E drive. Those D and E drives are typically going to be like additional USB drives that might have been plugged in, as right now this PC only just has the C drive. Uh, this one is pretty handy. Um, Microsoft's Internet Explorer. Um, obviously, not a whole lot of people use that on the consumer side, but it's pretty common in corporate settings. Um, I used to work for 3M, and that was our uh, our default um, browser that we used. You know, a lot of people used Chrome too, but we didn't really support Chrome technically. But if you go to Computer, H key Current User Software, Microsoft Internet Explorer, and you can go to Typed URLs. I typed a few things in here too right before I started the, the screen capture, just to kind of show. Now we can see Best Buy, Target, uh, BBC, ESPN, Google. Um, that last one, URL 6, that's actually just the splash page that it, it lands on. So, you know, that's just another different way to, to, to find browser history and stuff of that nature there too. So, good information to know. Um, this one's really interesting. You might not encounter this in the consumer setting. Not a whole lot of people encrypt their hard drives. But I went ahead and took a screenshot of my work laptop's BitLocker status and then my laptop's BitLocker status. Um, so this is handy to know because you can, you know, check to see if your drive's encrypted. Um, you can be see if you're going to be removing information even for a forensic setting. You're going to need some way to decrypt it. Um, so you'll need the encryption key. But this allows you to kind of determine whether or not the drive is for sure encrypted. So we go to H key local machines system, uh, current control set control, and then BitLocker status. Uh, we can see that this one is set to zero. This is my personal laptop, meaning that set to zero, it is not encrypted. Versus if we go to the same location on my work laptop, we can see that that value is set to one. So it is encrypted. So good way to kind of determine whether your drive is encrypted or not. There's other different ways to do it, but it's just one way to do it through the registry. Uh, this is handy information too that you might come across in a corporate setting. This helps determine PC ownership. So if you go to computer, local machine, uh, software, Microsoft, Windows NT, and then just on current version, don't expand current version, you can actually get a lot of information from there. You can see what version of Windows. If you look over on the right side under product name, you can see it's Windows 10. You can see the version, it's version 1809, the registered owner, um, I just type it's my phone number, uh, the root of the system, um, other things like that too. We do see this field too for registered organization. This is pretty handy, especially in, in, in a corporate setting, this would be filled. You know, like, for example, I used to work for 3M, so there would be a 3M under there, uh, rather than, you know, it just being left blank. But we can see that there is some some information there as far as just general information about the PC, too. Um, so, moving on to the next one. Uh, I would like to thank you guys for watching that. Definitely a lot of information in the registry. It's a pretty heavy database. It's just filled with a ton of info regarding the PC settings, the PC users. Um, the registry and the information in it with regard to a forensics investigation would most likely be used to kind of correlate things and to establish timelines and to you know further determine certain actions that might have occurred, like say the overall crime was information, intellectual property was stolen. Uh, well, how was it stolen? Was it stolen with a USB device? We could obviously go in and click there. Um, if there was any sort of malicious activity, network activity, we can find whatever networks were associated with the PC, and then we can see browser history and stuff like that too. So lots of information is stored in the registry. Um, lots of good stuff in there, and I'd like to thank you guys all for watching. Take care and have a good rest of the semester.